Hello YouTube, welcome to the first of many Design IQ tutorial videos. My name is Michael, I'm an application engineer here at the Gates Corporation. And seeing as this is our first tutorial video, I'll be illustrating a brief overview of the software itself. I'll be highlighting some of its capabilities, some of its quirks, as well as working through a simple example. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the software, Design IQ was originally developed to do the majority of the grunt work when it comes to de designing multi-point power transmission drives. An example of a drive like this would be the serpentine belt in your car. So the first thing you need to do is to download and install the software. The software is 100% free. It can be found on our website at gates.com forward slash design IQ. The download link is about halfway down the page and I will also put a link down in the description. After you download and install the software, the first screen that you will see is actually a sign up prompt. You will have to fill out this prompt in order to use the software. I can assure you that this will be the only time you have to do it, and every time you open the software after this point, this will be actually be the first screen that you see. So as we're starting a new drive here, we're going to click New Drive, and you'll notice that we have two options here. We have a synchronous belt and a V-belt. Now, before you start the design process, you will need to choose which type of belt you're planning to use. Depending on your application, one belt is likely more advantageous than the other. However, if you don't know which route you want to go, that is okay. The belt type you choose here can be changed at a later step in the design process. In this example, we've been tasked with to design a fixed center fan drive. This customer has a fan that runs 10 hours a day, 5 days a week, and this customer wants a the most compact drive possible with zero slippage. Since it's a fixed center drive, we need to incorporate an idler to install and tension the belt. So therefore, the customer has requested a slotted idler. So for this application, I'm going to choose the poly, a synchronous belt. I'm going to choose the Polychain GT Carbon. I'm going to go with the 8 millimeter pitch, which is right here. Click OK. So at a glance, you can see that the software is visually based. It's actually laid out in the XY plane, otherwise known as Cartesian coordinates. You have the XY table down here at the bottom. And you can see the sprocket number one is actually placed at the origin at zero, zero. We are currently in inches. If you'd like to change it to metric, it can be easily done by going up to tools here, units of measure, and then this drop down here right at the top says US customary. You can switch it to metric right there. But for now, for this example, I want to keep it in English units, so I'm just going to click cancel. Before we dive into design, I just want to highlight some of the functionality on this page. On the left-hand side, we have a number of buttons. And what's great about these buttons is actually if you just highlight over them, it gives you a brief description of what they do. So this very first one, the plus sign, adds a pulley, does exactly that. You can drag and drop it wherever you'd like. Notice when I drop it, it automatically updates the XY coordinates. This next button here is actually flip pulley. This helps with belt routing. I'll show you an example of that here in a minute. And this last one here is delete pulley. It looks like a minus symbol and it does exactly that. I'm going to add a pulley back just for the example. These next three have to do with your view. So this first one, zoom in, click it, you zoom right in, and then zoom out. And then this is my personal favorite here, it's zoom to fit. Just fits the belt drive to your screen. You can also use the scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in and out as well. These next two are undo and redo. They'll become your best friend, especially if your drive gets a little complex. This one here is the pan button. So this button, when you click it, it stays selected. It allows you to grab your drive and drag it wherever you like. Notice how it doesn't change the XY coordinates when you do that. But be careful though, because it does stay selected and you actually can't edit either of these sprockets. So I'm going to uncheck it there. Now these last three have to do with an idler. So we actually don't have one in this drive yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the Add Pulley button. I'm going to add an additional pulley and I'm going to put it right in the middle here. So notice how we have an inside idler here. The belt's actually running on the outside of every sprocket. To conserve space, I actually want to change this idler to a backside idler, meaning the belt's going to run on the other side. To do that is where that flip pulley button comes into play up here. So I click that guy. You notice how the belt reroutes itself around the backside of that idler. This can also be done by just simply right-clicking the pulley itself and clicking flip pulley. Currently, this the software thinks that this pulley specifically is still a driver or a driven pulley. So that's where these three buttons come into play. So this first one is a pivoted idler. So when I click that, you'll notice how it 
makes that center pulley a pivoting idler. I can actually grab it and move it and notice how the belt tracks depending on the location of the idler. This next one is a slotted idler. See, I've noticed by the straight line. And then this last button here removes the idler status from the pulley. Our customer has specifically requested the use of a slotted idler, so I'm going to make that a slotted idler for now. So now that we have the general layout of the drive, I always recommend labeling your pulleys at this point. It helps avoid confusion, especially if multiple people are going to be looking at this report. So number one here I'm going to call our motor, otherwise known as our driver. Number two here is actually going to be our fan. I'm going to call it the driven. And number three here is our idler. You'll notice how it populates the names on the screen. Our customer has requested a two to one speed down drive. So we need to have our driver half the size of our driven. So for in order to do that, you go down to the diameter here, which is actually no units of teeth or number of grooves. I'm going to change the driver. I'm going to go with a 45 tooth, and then I'm going to double the driven to a 90 tooth. Notice how we have some interference. So the next logical step is to place both sprockets dimensionally. So we're going to keep the driver at 0, 0 at the origin. The driven, our customer has requested a 13 inch center distance. So what I'm going to do is put 13 there. And then I'm going to put in the same plane as our motor, I'm going to put 0 there for the Y. I'm going to move our idler to five and a half inches, or should, should, should some, be somewhere in the middle. The Y dimension I'm going to leave for now as depending on our belt length, it should snap to the correct place. But before we dive into that, I want to cover a couple of the buttons up here at the top. Many of them may look familiar, like new, open, save, print. Uh, this is, stands for counterclockwise and clockwise here. This actually changes the, ori changes the orientation of the drive. Notice when I click the button, the belt is routed the other direction. We have some interference here, so I'm going to put it back the other direction. These next three are somewhat counterintuitive. So I know I mentioned at the beginning of the video how if you want to change what belt cross section you're using, you can. It's actually this button right here. It says choose another section. You click that guy, it'll bring up that same menu you saw at the beginning with the two options of a synchronous belt or a V-belt. And it'll actually, actually let you change what belt you're using without losing any of the data or any of the geometric data you've already inputted into the software. This next one here is the edit idler button. So when you click this guy, this option allows you to enter all the parameters of your idler, such as the angle, the start and end point, the length of adjustment, to really fine tune your design to see whether or not you're going to have enough adjustment to actually install and tension the belt. If you decide to use a pivoting idler, these parameters will look slightly different, but the overall gist of them is the same. This last one that looks like a wrench is actually the belt length finder. So this helps you determine the correct belt length given your parameters. So you click that guy, it brings up this table. So you'll notice these are all our stock belt lengths in here. The belts highlighted in red are actually outside the range of adjustment of our idler, so we can't select those. The belt highlighted in yellow denotes a belt that might be difficult to install. Um, this means that you might not have enough adjustment in order to get the belt on over the flanges, just the adjustment in the idler that you have. The white options are the best choice, so we're going to go with that. I'm going to double click this white belt right there and click OK. Notice how the idler snapped to the correct position based on that belt length. Click OK. Once the layout is finished, the final step is calculating what belt width you need based on your loading parameters. To do that, you click on this load entry button up here. We're gonna, you can see there's a layout of our drive, uh, tension information as well as belt width. Nothing's filled in yet because we haven't put in the loading information. But in order to do that, what we need to do is we need to go down here to condition number one. You can see we have our three components, the driver, driven, and idler. The direction of rotation, RPM, loading, units, so on and so forth. So the very first step is to select which sprocket is the driver. Automatically the software denotes the sprocket number one as the driver, which actually is our driver in this case. If not, you can just simply select a different sprocket to be the driver, but I'm going to leave it at one for now. The next step is the direction of rotation, which is denoted by DIR right here. So we always want the idler to be on the slack side of the belt during operation, which in this case it is. These can be easily changed by just selecting this drop-down menu here and changing it to counterclockwise. 
Next is the RPM. We know our motor's rated RPM is 1750, so we're going to plug that in here. And you'll notice how it automatically calculates the RPMs for the, the driven and the idler based on the geometry. Next is the loading information. You notice how the loading information for our driver is grayed out. I actually can't even click or input anything into that column. Reason being is Design IQ works on load draw. So for example, in theory, all of our power from the driver should be being be consumed by our driven sprocket or the fan in this case. So what we do is we go over to our driven, we plug in 30 horsepower there, which is the rated output of our motor, and you'll notice how it automatically populates our, our driver horsepower. There's no need to plug any horsepower in for the idler because it's not consuming power. The next step is the service factor. So this is critical to all belt drives. So for synchronous drives, we recommend a minimum of 1.6, and for V-belts, it's actually 1.2. Depending on how demanding your application is, you might want to bump that factor up accordingly. You know, if there's a lot of shock loading, a lot of starting and stopping, you know, maybe 1.8, 1.9, maybe even 2.0 if it's a very demanding application. And seeing how this fan runs 10 hours a day, five days a week, I'm just going to leave it at the minimum of 1.6. But you'll notice I still can't plug that in. It's just similar to the loading, I can't plug in 1.6 for the driver, so I actually have to do it for the driven and you'll notice it automatically populates to the driver. No need, again, no need to plug in a service factor for the idler because it is not consuming power. Alrighty, the last step is to click calculate up here. So you'll notice the page changed. We have our deflection distance up here as well as the deflection force. All the tensioning information is up here as well as the belt width. So it looks like we nailed it right on the head with a 21 millimeter wide belt, which is actually a stock belt width for us. Um, sometimes you will calculate more or less than our stock belt width. We typically will always recommend the higher belt width just to add a little padding to your service factor. So in this case, a 21 millimeter wide belt should do just fine. I'm comfortable given the loading situation. But that's pretty much it. That's a crash course in how to design and size a, a three point power transmission drive. If you're designing a slightly different drive that doesn't look like this, you may have ran into a, a number of roadblocks along the way that weren't covered in this video. So keep an eye out on the channel. I'm going to be coming out with a more in-depth design video where I'm going to be highlighting you know, some of the issues might run into some of the roadblocks. We're also going to be uploading a video that dives into the detailed drive report section of this report. <clears throat> it can be found up here once you click print. It has a ton of good information like tensioning, shaft load, fatigue ratios, drive geometry. It's a really great tool, especially if you're going to have multiple sets of eyes on this drive. If you have any questions, concerns, or just want some drive design assistance, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. You can leave a comment below, send or shoot us an email at ptpasupport at gates.com or by phone at 303-744-5800. Thank you for watching.